Hi everyone, this is Dawn here with um, a follow-up message to my last video which uh, was entitled The Call of the Loon, I believe, um, and it was about the Angel of Infinite Mercy. And today's video I'm going to touch on that a bit um, and talk a little bit about um, Ash Wednesday and Lent. Um, and Ash Wednesday this year is on Valentine's Day. And that is no coincidence, but it is indeed a co-incidence um, that I'll discuss. And then um, just a brief um, word about um, my journey at the end. So let's start with um, where I left off on the call of the loon and the angel of infinite mercy. Um, I had talked about how um, there was a passage that we were going through and that I was given, you know, just sort of this... Um, that photo that I took um, and this um, information about the angel of infinite mercy that can be accessed um, by each one of us during this passage, um, which uh, was four to six weeks from the last time I made the video. So I'm not sure. I think that was maybe sort of in the in that um, passage now. So it's maybe another month. Um, and <clears throat> so as um, in the in the last week um, after I posted that video and just in my own day-to-day -day life, I the idea of mercy has come up frequently for me, primarily for me in my prayer and meditation time, also on a couple of walks. And so I keep, I've been meditating on, um, you know, it just keeps coming to me, this um, portion um, from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, um, where he says, Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. And so I looked up the meaning of mercy, and mercy means compassion or forgiveness shown toward someone whom it is within one's power to punish or harm. Let me read that again. Compassion or forgiveness shown toward someone whom it is within one's power to punish or harm. Mercy. So just my heart fills with such love just considering that that meaning even adds so much more, you know, that definition adds so much more to the idea of mercy. And um, and mercy is and grace are what um, I believe that God is all about and I believe is at the very, it's the very, the truest nature um, of life itself and that means of who we are as well. We are light and life and love. And this world is a world of corruption that can cover that up um, and it can bury the truth of all things. And uh, it can look um, like pretty, pretty bleak <laughs> at times. And, um, and so mercy, I've been reflecting on this idea of mercy. Um, and then I was just given a, uh, a message about uh, Lent this year. I thought it was just for me at first until I realized I kept getting these nudges and I was like, oh, what am I missing here? And um, so I went and looked up the uh, date that Lent started this year. And guess what? It starts on Valentine's Day. So Valentine's Day, February 14th, of course. Um, and um, if you want to know the history of that, go I encourage you to look it up. Um, it's kind of a, you know, mixed convoluted story, um, but it is also the celebration of St. Valentine, who we don't really know much about. But um, so Valentine's Day coincides with the first day of Lent, which is Ash Wednesday. Now, so Ash Wednesday in the Christian tradition, um, it, you know, you put the cross in ashes on your forehead to, uh, it's a reminder of repentance and it also uh, it signifies the beginning of Lent, which is a 40-day period. Technically, it's 46 days, and the idea of Lent is fasting and preparation leading up to Easter. So it's 40 fasting days plus the six Sundays, which makes 46 days before Easter is when uh, Ash Wednesday is or and when Lent begins. And so Lent um, is a season where um, historically um, those who observe it give up something or sacrifice something um, or it's also a time of purification, um, which I touched on in the last video as well. And so, so this idea of the fact that this year Lent begins on Ash Wednesday, which is the same day as Valentine's Day, 
to me is so beautiful um, for a couple of reasons. But um, for one, just the simple fact that the day we are um, culturally, anyway, um, celebrating love and all things love um, is also the beginning of a 40-day period leading up to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And Jesus, in my way of seeing this journey that of, of sacred partnership and, and really the whole of my life, is, is the very representation of life and the life more abundant. And um, he is, um, is a... Um, is the embodiment of divinity in human form. Um, I, I believe he was fully human and fully divine. And uh, just as I believe he spoke about um, uh, that I am, I and the Father are one, and he spoke about um, that, um, that you come through the, uh, the Father through me, um, and he was showing us that it's it's within that our that heaven on earth, the kingdom of heaven, is within us, and in our union with that, we are able to be raised to new life and experience life and life to the full. So Ash Wednesday and Valentine's Day being on the same day as I said, is no coincidence. I mean, it is on the calendar, perhaps. It's not every year that this occurs. But instead of just being shrug it off and, oh, well, it just so happens, let's look at the miracle of that. And where we are in this time of transformation in our world and where um, the many um, of the waves of those who were called out and set apart are in terms of the, the arc of this journey, um, I believe it is really, really special that there is this coincidence. And also think in terms of, you know, of physics and the, the very meaning of coincidence and, and everything we know, this is not my area, so I'm not going to try to explain it, but everything we know about the connection that we have, that, that we are experiencing and how the one is connected to the other and all of it held in love. And, um, you know, the infinite field of grace um, to which all things belong and how they show up as matter or energy is is uh, makes no difference to the fact that it is okay I'm gonna stop veering off into the scientific realm because I do want to share um, an important passage with you so Lent begins on Valentine's Day it just so happens this year and um, Lent is a period of fasting and preparation Lent is um, is historically a reminder of Jesus's preparation um, and how um, after his baptism he immediately went into this 40 days of um, fasting in the desert and he was tempted there that's where the temptation um, from he experienced three temptations from Satan and I'm gonna just read at the end, at the conclusion of the 40 days. And I'm going to read um, this passage. I'm actually going to begin the um, last verse of the chapter before. This is from um, Matthew, tail end of chapter 3 and into chapter 4. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him, alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting forty days and forty nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point in the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. 
Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and the angels came and attended him. So immediately following these three temptations, let's review what those were again. That was, the first temptation was, um, Satan said, Tell these stones to become bread. Um, so in other words, you're hungry, you can, you can have what you need. You know, just take the power into your own hands um, instead of waiting for God to provide bread. And this is, uh, to me, always reminds me of the manna from heaven that fell um, when the Israelites were wandering in the desert for 40 years. So that was the first temptation, was the temptation to work a miracle, essentially, and um, take um, control of the situation um, and not trust God. Um, and also the, the idea of immediate satisfaction is, is implicit there. So the second temptation in Matthew is, um, if you're the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written that the angels will lift you up and not let your feet uh, strike against the stone. And Jesus says, do not put the Lord your God to the test. So Jesus is, again, invited to use um, his power essentially to test the word of God, um, to test what is written. Um, and he um, says no to that temptation. Sorry, the third um, temptation, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you if you will bow down and worship me. And so the temptation of, you know, greed and having everything um, given to you. And um, it's uh, important to remember, I think, that in the in the tradition biblical of the biblical record, it was God that allowed Satan to tempt Jesus. And so um, that so immediately following these three temptations, Jesus begins his ministry, which lasted three years on earth. He calls out his disciples. He begins to heal the sick. And then the very next chapter of Matthew is what is the very, very heart of Jesus' core teachings, the Sermon on the Mount, which is commonly referred to as the Beatitudes. Um, and one of those is about mercy. I'll just go ahead and read those real quick to you. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And then Jesus says, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So I really, I just felt this was so beautiful that Lent begins on a day we celebrate love. And this period, um, um, is an opportunity for us to remember what it is to be merciful, what it is to be pure and purified, and to act you know, with integrity and love and compassion. Even when we are given um, the, the opportunity, the right, the free will choice to take things into our own hands. And uh, many of us will have encountered moments when we certainly wanted to do that. And that goes for both divine feminine and divine masculine, um, perhaps in different ways at different times with different people in different situations. But nevertheless, all of us have encountered those moments and may have encountered them recently. Um, and I know for myself, 
um, there have been at, at my the heights even of this um, of my own journey and also at the depths at both ends of that spectrum there have been moments when I certainly wanted to take things into my own hands to include the kinds of temptations that Jesus faced um, in the desert um, similar sorts of temptations and um, you know you can read more about those if you look up the you know the seven deadly sins or I think is what they're referred to and um, and each of us has our own um, areas of challenge um, and vulnerabilities. I don't like to think of them as weaknesses or deadly sins, but I do think that they're just areas where we have experienced, you know, compromise or heartbreak or um, pain or injustice. Um, and it can be very tempting at times to want to put the Lord our God to the test, to want to seize control and just, you know, we know we can do this. So let here, uh, you know, tired of waiting, God, I'm, I'm going to be in charge. Or um, what was the third one? Um, oh, the um, the greed of wanting um, to just just compromise our um, knowing and our faith. Um, in exchange for the the wealth um, and the 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 things of this world, essentially, um, and um, so each of those, I think, is a good reminder for us to take into the season of Lent, whether you celebrate Lent or not. Um, you know, on Valentine's Day, um, on in this time where we're celebrating love this month of February. And as we move into uh, March, just consider that. And I was shown quite clearly, both before I made that last video and after, that th there is absolutely angelic support here for us in a very big way right now. That angel of infinite mercy is able to is available to be accessed from within each one of us, um, and is also. Um, there, there's you know more than one angel there is literally and we're surrounded by a, a field um, of angels who are singing beautiful beautiful music to us right now in this time um, I was given um, I hesitate to say this because of my video last year with regard to this but I was um, given a, an, another um, glimpse of some, you know, April um, unfoldings, and I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, one thing, though, that also was interesting to me is that, so Lent is 40 days uh, or 46 days if you count the Sundays, and then Easter. So that also means that this year, um, well, I guess every year, um, Lent to Good Friday is 44 days, and Good Friday um, being uh, a misnomer, but Good Friday is the date of the crucifixion. And so um, Jesus' ultimate um, denial of the temptation to um, opt out um, of um, his full service to humanity. So um, let's see if there's anything else I wanted to share. I, I think mainly, you know, what I just feel so strongly is important for us in this time is the idea of um, honoring ourselves and the journey um, and most of all embodying the mercy that has been shown to us by a God who is good and by a life that has sustained us and not bowing to the temptation to to um, punish or harm someone or even you know set someone um, in their place or correct um, someone simply um, because it is within our power um, to to not yield to that temptation but rather to trust that angel of infinite mercy that is with us at all times and to practice compassion and forgiveness and love. 